Welcome to Move Your Mind. My name is Nick Brax, and this is a podcast where we have real conversations with real people and give real advice. Mental health affects everyone. But ironically, it's often the people on the front line that neglect their own mental health in order to help others. Carly Baker is a social media manager, podcast host, and nurse amongst many other things. She graduated university in 2015 with a bachelor's in kinesiology. And after being a personal trainer for a year, she decided to attend nursing school. She then moved to Southern California to further her career and obtained her first nursing job, working for Mission Hospital in their medical, surgical, trauma, and ortho unit. Currently, she also works for the University of California, Irvine in their trauma and neuro unit. Operation Happiness was officially launched in 2019, but the idea sparked much earlier. It was founded by Shannon McPeak to help the nursing profession battle work-related stress, anxiety, and depression together. Thanks so much for supporting Move Your Mind. If you'd like to learn more, you can join the Move Your Mind community by going to moveyourmind.me, or you can purchase the Move Your Mind book by going to nickbrax.com slash book. All right, well, Carly, thank you so much for making the time, Or and I apologize for um, being late today, and the last week we were meant to do it, we had, I was sick, so we're finally here. It wasn't COVID, by the way, but... um. I, yeah, was just wiped out, which I guess so many people are getting sick at the moment. But anyway, I'm glad we can um, finally do this interview. Yeah, me too. A little blast from the recent past. It's like, hey, we know him. Yeah, exactly. But I I also just um, got over, I did have COVID. I had it about a month ago. Luckily, my symptoms were pretty minimal, so it only lasted about a week. But I find it really hard and I'm trying to work on this, but I'm a very go, go, go type of person. So the doctor, she's like, you really need to relax. This is why you got sick because you're working in the hospital. You need to learn how to chill and listen to your body. And it just, it was cool until about six days into quarantine and I was going insane. And so I was like, I got to go outside. I have to feel the air on my body. <laughs> it's just too much. So I, it's like a blessing and a curse because my body was finally getting the relaxation I know it needed. But at the same time, I could not, I could not stay inside anymore. So, it's but like, we survived. How do I, you got through it. You're here. Yeah. You look healthy. Ooh, you're you. here. <laughs> um, but it is hard, isn't it? To like, when your mind's like racing a million miles an hour to, give yourself that time out. Uh, mm-hmm. I find that really hard as well. Yeah. That's it's what I'm tough. working on with myself is learning how to be present and also learning to listen to my body when it needs rest. So that's yeah, my not really New Year's resolution resolution. Yeah. I might join you on that one because I, that's, <laughs> I find it mm-hmm. so hard when I want to do so many things in my mind, you know, you, it's always thinking 10 steps ahead and it's very hard to just um, yeah, like you said, you know, and, and I'm talking about mental health and a lot of the time I'm finding it hard. I guess that's why I got into this work, but you know, it's hard to be present sometimes when you're worrying a bit or thinking about so many things, or you're just on the move all the time rather than just being mm-hmm. like, okay, this is where I am right now. Let's just, you know, let's, um, and I'm good at giving go that advice that. to other people, but I can't give that advice to myself. Every time my friends like, I'm like, just take care of yourself, honey. Just relax. Like, take a day off or two. And then the minute it's my turn, I'm like, nope, got to power through. We got this. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> do as I do as I say, not as I do. Yep. It's what it Every time. Always comes back to. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's pretty pretty common though for most people. So it's like to to sort of not, you know, we we can see from the outside what what other pe- what like we can give good advice, but when it's your own life, it's so hard to mm-hmm. be able to to see it that way. Especially where you live too, because I know at least here in Orange County, California, everybody is super go, go, go all the time trying to make money and hustling. And it's just that mindset out here and it's very contagious. So I know you're in New York, so I'm sure it's kind of the same way because it's a busy city, but it just never stops. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think it's probably had, you know, I think it really has had if I weigh it up, I've been here for about a year now, it's probably had more of a negative impact on my mental health than positive. Uh, really? Be- because it is just, um, I mean, it's never ending and it's very hard to find that balance, I feel. And, you know, you sort of just get sucked into it all. And um, I don't know, I find it difficult, but it's, I mean, a lot of good sides as well. But yeah, I think when you're sort of around, um that never ending there's never ending things to do and achieve and people to meet and everyone's got that similar attitude 
it can mm -hmm. be pretty tough to to find a way yeah. to keep balance within that. Definitely. And I, I was telling Shannon about this, who is the other co-host to our podcast on Happy Hour with Operation Happy Nurse. But I was explaining to her that, I don't know if it's just in the nursing world, I think everyone's kind of feeling it too, but there's this, I don't want to say generalized negativity right now, but there's just so much stress that everybody's going through on their own that I'm picking up on. It's whether in the hospital or outside with family, friends, et cetera, we're all kind of going through it, I feel like. So that's been very hard to selfishly work on what I need to work on within my own life and mental health mm -hmm. and also try to be there for other people. That's the good balance I'm working on. Boundaries are healthy. <laughs> so healthy. No, exactly. Uh, and yeah, it's like you try, it's like, how do I, you know, I need to work on myself, give myself enough self-care and rest be there for other people and also keep up with all of my work commitments it's like very hard to do all at once and sometimes it it might be that it's just like hey, i've got to be realistic here and maybe i need to sort of take a step backwards on one of these other things like you said and not just boundaries with um you know with friends and um and but at work as well. And in, in all situations, like it's just, mm -hmm. it's really important, isn't it? So like, cause it, it just, if we don't, that's when we get burnt out. Right. And that's what I'm learning to. Yes. Last year, I would say was the year of saying no, which sounds really rude, but it was just yeah. creating those boundaries and even little things. Do you want to go to the store with me? You know what? I'm not really feeling like it. Let me just stay home. Do you want to go totally. do this with me at night? Like, I'd rather stay home and watch Netflix. No, thank you. It's just making those boundaries for myself. And he'd, like you said, you don't have to be rude about it. Just letting people know that it's okay to take care of yourself too. And especially with nursing, which I could talk all day about that, but we're supposed to leave I hope, I hope the you door. Do. Yeah, I want to hear about it. I want to hear all about it. <laughs> Let me get on my soapbox. <laughs> but maybe not all day. All day. Yeah, not we'll, all day. <laughs> we've got an hour. We've got an hour here. You can talk as much about it in, in the next hour as you want. <laughs> it's just it's stressful. It, I'm trying to take care of other people, but we're told to leave everything at the door to do that. But at the back of your head, if you're going through your own stuff, it's incredibly difficult to do your job and not mm. think about what's bothering you. And then for me, I'm sure other nurses feel the same or healthcare workers in general, but it's so funny how you don't realize you're going through something. And the minute someone says something, either a patient, doctor, whoever, coworker, just does not hit you right. And then you're in the break room crying or just like, why am I having a mental breakdown at work right now for yeah. no reason, essentially. And it's yeah. just because you kept everything in like you're supposed to and get through your day, 12 hours, whatever, and then you're not sitting with it properly. So that's, that's no, very, I think. It, yeah, it's no, I think it's a really, really valid point what you've said there. And, um, you know, humans are so adaptable. So whatever, you know, we can normalize any sort of behavior. And, and I think that goes back to my point about living in New York. It's like, um, it becomes the norm to live this sort of crazy lifestyle if, if you don't have enough boundaries, which it's very easy to fall into it. And you're sort of around people that are just going 24 seven and, you know, not living this sort of normal balanced life. And that becomes a norm until you have that time where you sit back and think, and it's happened to me when I left. And recently I was in Vancouver visiting um, a friend there and I used to live there and it's just so peaceful. And I was like, just, you know, a, a day or two in, I thought, wow, I can, I'm thinking creatively. I feel myself again, my mind's opening up. I'm, I've got space around me. And then I got perspective, but when you're in the middle of it, it's very hard to like, to get that. So I think for, for anyone listening, you know, that point you were making, I think it's really important in whatever you're doing day to day to find a way to be able to just step out and just evaluate things and think, hang on, you know, am I overdoing things here? Are my core needs being met? Am I getting too swept up in whatever it is? Cause it happens to, to all of us and it, it's how we do you know get burnt out and um become unhappy you know it's just not it's not healthy you can't sustain it you know for long term no and then you'll feel it i hit a point i think it was i actually took a mental health leave about probably 2020 
at the beginning of the year after 2019 and that whole fiasco. So that you yeah. all probably remember, you know, that cute little pand pandemic. Um, yeah, that so cute I little thing that's still going, you know, three years. <laughs> still going, <laughs> multiplying, changing, you know. Yeah, it's so cute cares. like that, isn't it? How it just keeps like <laughs> adapting and changing. It's, yeah, I love it. <laughs> love science. Uh, so <laughs> I hit this point where I kind of sat with myself and I realized we're still going. This is still happening. The hospital is still changing every time. And I'm a very, I'm trying not to be, but I'm a very structured person. Type A, you could mm -hmm. say, I love having routine and I thrive when I'm getting tasks done and stuff like that. So when I when it was still going on and changing and every time I was coming into work, it was, oh, you're getting floated to this other unit at the hospital. You're not gonna be on your own shift today. Things are changing. Sorry, we just told you last minute. And so for me, I'm immediately anxious and stressed out. And that was happening almost every shift or it would be almost like, okay, today, COVID patients are back on our floor. I mean, I'm a medical surgical nurse, so we usually don't see those patients. God bless those ICU nurses. I don't know how they do it, but it's very different than what I was used to. So I had to acclimate to that. And January, 2020, it kind of hit me that we were still going and my stress level was so high and all my mm. other nursing friends were getting burnout as well. And I was, they were telling me you need to take some time off. And, and it's really mm. hard for me to admit that I quote mm. unquote am weak, even though I wasn't, but <laughs> I just was like, I can do it. We're fine. I can have, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm fine. Totally got this, but I, did not have it. So I think it's important to, again, I keep saying, but listen to your body and just understand where your mental health is. And sometimes it takes somebody else to call you out and let you know how you're doing. And oh, that actually is very helpful absolutely. for me. I love those friends that call you out. <laughs> I think, you know, and I'm, I'm just relating to everything you're saying. And I think I'm probably similar. I'm like a, a type A sort of personality. I want to do everything. I want to take on the world. I'll, you know, I, and I can be very unrealistic in my belief in what my ability is in what I can handle and take on. And, and it, it is, it comes back to that saying no thing where I'm always my, my Achilles heel, which I'm getting better at, but I'm still not great at is like, I say yes to everything. I want to do everything. And I take on too much at once and it's just not realistic, but you sort of, it's almost like this anger and frustration at not having the you know time or ability to be able to do everything you want because you want to you know you just want to do it all but i've found yeah friends i think mentors like i'm you know i think having like i've got two mentors that i check in with one that i talk to daily sometimes and they're brutally honest with me to the point where it can be a bit upsetting sometimes but it's <laughs> very very effective that yeah. you know they'll just be there's no holding back it's like no nope, nick shut up <laughs> yeah. you're, you're you're wrong i know you i know what you want to do no stop talking do mm -hmm. this <laughs> and then it, but it, it really helped so i think it's like i don't know it if does. you yeah yeah you, you found that being mm -hmm. helpful yes i have a lot of i think it's for me it's mainly people that are in nursing as well with me and they're the first ones yeah. to call me out and say hey you're being really negative at work right now what's going on does something happen today or is this kind of building up and I love those people because then I, you know, you understand, wait, yeah, I'm looking back and yeah, you're right. You're so right. Thank you for telling me that. Cause I wasn't noticed again. It just keeps going and going and snowballing until someone calls you out. So I like that. Yeah. Actually, yeah. ironically, my first manager, when I first started in nursing, I had my first um, like yearly, what do you call that? Um, what's the word? basically sat me down and said, okay, this is how you're doing so far. Cause I was a new grad mm -hmm. nurse. So I graduated a mm -hmm. year before and she sat me down and said, you are good at what you do, but you try to take too many things on and you need to learn how mm -hmm. to delegate to your other coworkers. And, and I was like, the first thing I said was, well, they're my patients. I know them better than anybody else. So why would I give ever someone else tasks to do for my patients? And she just kept reiterating, yeah. you can't do this all on your own. This is a very heavy floor and it's very fast paced. <laughs> I'm like, challenge accepted. <laughs> She's like, like, you're yeah. not listening. <laughs> this is not my point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, even so, if you can do it, we want you to be healthy and yeah. <laughs> yeah. be able to like, yeah, it's crazy. Um, so how, how long have you been, uh, nursing for and what, what got you into it? So I've been a nurse now 
in California for four years. I work on a medical surgical floor, which specializes in orthopedics, trauma, and neurology. So basically a lot of surgeries, joints and hips, knees, shoulders, trauma mm. patients. So car accidents, everything, broken people, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, I actually started in kinesiology. I got my first bachelor's in exercise science. So I immediately went into personal training, realized I loved helping people at that aspect of it. Always loved anatomy and physiology, but it just wasn't fulfilling me as much as I wanted it to. There's a lot of accountability from the patients or clients back then. And so I was struggling with wanting to help these people so much, but not being able to, because they had to be accountable for themselves. So that was a big struggle for me. And then I decided, I love all that wounds and all that stuff. So I decided to go into nursing and you get both aspects of it. And same thing, yeah. there's a lot of accountability yeah. that doesn't get fulfilled, but it's still, I, nursing, at least bedside is very, it's been rough. I won't lie, but it's been very mm. rewarding as well. Most of the time. So I love it. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean, like what's, there's not many things that would be more rewarding. I mean, you're, you're help like you're, you're on the ground saving lives or helping people overcome these, you know, critical things. It's like, I can imagine it would be very, you know, a combination of probably um, rewarding, overwhelming fulfilling you know so many different things that you'd experience but i can also imagine that would just make you feel you know so alive every day and and even and then in your own life give you so much perspective that's what i find from um the mental health work that i've i've been lucky enough to do and when i'm when i'm out there doing talks and connecting with people and hearing from other people's stories you you feel it gives you a lot of perspective in your own life and i've had periods especially in new york where i haven't been doing as much of it and I find I really feel that I feel like I start to lose that sort of grounded sort of feeling so I presume you know that would probably give you a lot of that yeah it definitely does there's some days where at the beginning when I started I mm. was really bad at taking everything at work with home with me and I was taking it out on mm. my loved ones and people around me just because if I had a rude patient I was angry I had to come home and be angry and it would just go through everybody. So I've kind of now, since I'm four years in, I've learned how to take a step back and reevaluate and not really be as reactive, more just realize that's a them problem. I will help them with that problem, but I don't need to take that on as my own. <laughs> so yeah, that's been really, really healthy for me. And I know you talk about all about mindset and that's basically what it is, was just rewiring to mm. be the best person I can be for myself and as well as not bring what I'm going through to my patients and then not take what they're going through back to me. So it's just a whole little cycle I was working through. So I I think I'm at a good point right now, now that COVID is still happening, but it's kind of plateauing, I would say right now, at least where I am at. So that's been, mm -hmm. that's been nice. <laughs> a bit more normality and yeah, exactly. I think, you know, with COVID, I think we are definitely on the, you know, on the tail, like things are going to get better now. It looks like it's, you know, it's not going to sort of get back to as bad as it was. Well, you never know. I guess like, I you know, never like say never why anymore. did you say that? <laughs> Actually, you know what? Like I take that back. Let's just, I don't know. I have no comment. <laughs> she just no comment. the entire know. world. <laughs> I know if it, something will happen, it's all my fault. So She's yeah, like we've got it at, at 11.38 a.m. on Friday morning, New York time. Uh, Nick, we, we've got actually on footage of this now of me jinxing the world with COVID. So I'm, I apologize. <laughs> um, he created his um, own variant. <laughs> uh, God, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not good. Um, so can you tell me about Operation Happy Nurse? Yes. So... Shannon McPeak is the founder of Operation Happy Nurse, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. She can tell you what all mm -hmm. the jargon means. I just know that. <laughs> uh, so basically back, yeah. I'm like, hmm, great. Well, it's a nonprofit. That's what I yes, take out exactly. of it. I don't, I don't know about the 501c3. <laughs> I took a nonprofit Somebody out of it. Okay. Might know. I'm <laughs> sure there'll be a few. But yeah. So she... The way that she tells the story is 2017, 
she was a new grad nurse working in the NICU, which for those who don't know is the neonatal intensive care unit, basically critical care for babies. And it just had a lot of stress on her because obviously you're taking care of infants, sick infants, and dealing with, unfortunately, some infant deaths as well. So she was just having trouble getting through that. And um, she said it was coming out more as OCD and anxiety. And, it, and like we just talked about, it took a friend of hers basically calling her out saying, I'm realizing that you're being a lot less compassionate than you usually are. And I can notice that you're struggling. So then 2018, a year later, she thought, you know, I must, I cannot be the only one struggling with these things. We all, you know, all my nursing coworkers were talking about it. So she sent out a survey, I believe it was national to all like nurses and healthcare workers just to see how their mental health was. And I think it was 90% came back and said that they were struggling from at least some form of stress or anxiety and depression. So from that, she 90%. Oh, and sorry. And you were saying of healthcare workers? Mm-hmm. Of nurses. Wow. I, I believe nurses oh and healthcare workers. God. That's, that's yes. crazy. And then from that, she asked, do you have any resources to deal with these problems? And 52% said that there are no resources at all. And the only resource they do have, if they do have one, was debriefing, which is when, if there's a traumatic incident that goes on, if a patient dies or something, then you get with your coworkers and whoever was involved in that incident and you talk about what went wrong, what went right, and how we're feeling emotionally and stuff like that. So there really were no like therapeutic resources or counseling available, at least 2018. Mm. Um, luckily with COVID, I think there's been a lot more resources, but then again, mm. I just found out less than a year ago, or maybe nine months ago that we have therapy and that's you know three years into COVID already <laughs> I'm like oh that yeah. would have been nice to know when I was taking leaves for my anxiety and whatnot uh so basically Operation Happy Nurse Shannon started that in 2000 December 2020 is when the website took off everything kind of got pushed forward because of COVID and then that's when the podcast started as well the happy hour podcast basically just talking about mental health and practicing different stress and anxiety relief activities too that I do with her and just try to see what works and let other people know so they can try their own things. And the operationhappynurse.org website has a hundred plus stress relievers and whatnot and blogs wow. and nutrition facts and anything that everybody wants to check out, which I'm sure we'll mm. link it somewhere. But yeah, so no, it's, we'll it's put basically that in just- the, um... That'll be in the show notes of the of the episode as well. So anyone listening can can go there. Okay. Um, it's just sorry. Yep. Yeah, you're fine. It's just about basically nurses helping with them with their mental health and letting them know that they're not alone. And I shouldn't just say nurses, also respiratory therapists, doctors, etc. Just we're all in this together and we're all going through it, like I said. So just helping people find resources to help them along their little journey. So yeah, that's that's amazing though. Like and that's, it's just crazy that, you know, to think 90% and they, this is, you know, people that are there on the ground helping other people and they're not, you know, they're not having the mechanisms to be able to cope themselves. It's, it's insane, isn't it? So it's like mm -hmm. such an important thing. And yeah, that's really, really amazing that um, that exists now. Such a, such a, yeah. Yeah. It's nice too. Cause I, I honestly I was blessed and I would say mm -hmm. I never had mental health issues per se that I was aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once COVID happened is when my anxiety that I never had before, I was having trouble sleeping and just coming out kind of, I don't want to say angry, but just very snappy. Like with my stress, I was just everyone yeah. just was not the person I wanted to be because I usually try to be a little ray of sunshine and rainbows and I was not that person. And so I, I'm still working. I'll be honest, since this is an open discussion, I'm working on getting myself into therapy because I think that'll really help. But, and it's, again, I, I tell everybody, oh, go to therapy. It's so nice. Like you go to therapy. And then there's something in my head. that's like, ah, oh, I don't want to talk to a stranger and all about my feelings. They don't need to hear that. That's not their business or their problem. And that's, <laughs> so I'm working on the steps. Yeah, so I yeah. have the website yeah. that we use for our hospital so we can get some free sessions, which is super nice and helpful. And then I'm going to 
this year, I told myself I need to start. So. Thank you so much for supporting Move Your Mind. We're expanding the offerings of the organization and we're tailoring everything we do to suit you guys and to try and answer to all of your needs and the questions that you send in. The book is available globally. You can find all of the links at nickbrax.com slash book. And we've just released the Move Your Mind community. We've currently got a men's community group, a women's community group, a general group. We're going to be lo loading up other groups. And you can find all of the links at moveyourmind.me. This group's been created based on the needs of what we've heard and learnt throughout running Move Your Mind. And we have live events. We've got courses. We've got huge amounts of value, the ability to share information, share ideas, work in groups together to, to grow and share your learnings, to learn about different topics. You get email reminders. There's a whole lot of features in there. We're constantly updating it, and we're so excited to share it with you. You can find all of the information about it at moveyourmind.me. Yeah, well, steps. Baby, baby steps, exactly. Everything's, it's all about the baby steps, but... Um, no, it's, it's interesting because, yeah, ther I guess because I've, like, seen therapists for, I don't know, 15 years or something, um, it, I'm like, oh, how could anyone, you know, be over, like, intimidated by doing that? So, I, like, I'd if someone could pay for me to see them every day, I'd do it because I'm just like, this is cool. People were getting paid to just listen to me talk about my problems. and <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, but it's like anything, like you're saying. I, know, I remember when I first went there, I was overwhelmed and stressed and not knowing you know and, and it's like that for everything like anything we haven't done before we're going to have hesitation about so it's sort of um making those baby steps towards it but i think it's is the important thing not yeah and just taking that first step because everything yeah feels intimidating until we go and go and do it mm -hmm. yeah i know I'll, I'll do that okay <laughs> i will i promise <laughs> No, you don't have to. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I know. Well, um, the, we've been learning a lot. I mean, a lot of the stress and anxiety relief activities we're doing, we've done started with adult coloring books, and it's gotten progressively mm -hmm. more intense. We've done Reiki, acupuncture. We did Rage Rooms, which was a favorite of mine, <laughs> and wow, so, therapy last time. So yeah, a lot of different um, things. Yeah, that's really cool. What what happens in a Rage Room? Well, Sh Shannon and go in there and scream producer. and yeah, <laughs> basically they're all different That'd depending cool. on which one yeah. you go to. But that's what I'm saying. I had all this stress coming out as anger almost that I thought maybe in a roundabout way, doing something that is more anger fueled or stress fueled, maybe I will feel better afterwards. So basically go in this room and they have hammers like every, like a crowbar, they have all these things you can use as tools to smash. Like there's printers, you can even bring some of your own supplies, whatever makes you angry in the world. Some people were yeah. saying they bring things from their exes or something that they just have anger towards so they could smash them. And it, and I put on the best old emo nostalgic rock playlist, a little bit of metal in there just to get myself in the zone. <laughs> and yeah. Oh my gosh. Amazing. It was about, it was a workout though. I will not lie. Cause you have these hazmat suits on to protect yourself for safety, goggles, gloves, everything. And so uh, it was about 30 minutes on and off with one of my girlfriends and it was the best thing ever. I would definitely go back. Wow. I felt better afterwards, <laughs> but if you have some stress in you, I would definitely recommend to anybody out there. Yeah, no, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, and and I guess like added bonus of it being a like you said, good workout as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might just walk through New York and just start smashing stuff. So if you well, if you see you get if you see headline, <laughs> you yeah. see headlines on the news, you you'll know what's happened. Like the world is my rage room. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, it might not go down too well. But that's it's um, cool. Done like a lot of cool things. So. Check them out on the website. Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, and what are, are there some other things that you've like started doing or you found have helped with you in that area when you, when you were going through those periods or with de just on a daily basis, dealing with your own mental wellbeing? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Are there things that you found worked? I've honestly been going on a lot of dates with myself, which has been yeah. so nice. I'm, 
a book nerd at heart. So I will go to Barnes and Noble, my haven, buy a new book, and then I'll go get lunch by myself. I've honestly been to the movies by myself before COVID. Um, I think that's something that I've learned when I've, I'm a, such an extrovert, but I think it's really important that people learn how to be by themselves and with themselves in order to grow and learn who you are, as cheesy as that sounds. So that has been very helpful for me. And I also love exercising. So I've been doing, I used to be against group exercise. I just didn't get anything out of it. I was always in my zone at the gym with my headphones on. And I've been doing cycling and Pilates and just different forms, but also listening to my body <laughs> when I don't want to yeah. do them. But just getting movement in and being out in nature, those two things really reground me. So I like that a lot. That's been very helpful. So no, I love that. Yeah, exactly. Being being out in nature is so so important. I think it's like, you know, it's and it, it it's something that I it, I guess it's we're meant to be in nature. Mm-hmm. You know, if we and we if we don't get it, it's like it really does make a difference. And um yeah just making that time to to no matter what get yourself to to go and do that it's so grounding um yeah Yeah. I think that's does it affect you when you're in do you have not to get all deep but do you have problems with or like mental health issues around the cold or any issues right now with New York are you finding yourself Um, like seasonally depressed or anything that's been bothering you because of the weather because out here in California it's beautiful all the time so that's been very helpful in a way too yeah well I mean it's kind of weird with me because I like I live used to live in Vancouver and um I'm one of those weird people that love I, I guess I'm very sensitive and I love bad weather so I love like um when you when it's cloudy overcast mm-hmm. misty raining all of that kind of thing. So I definitely don't get seasonal depression over that. Like, that, and that's why I love Vancouver. It rains like 70% of the time. And it's that very misty, it's like the movie Twilight. It literally looks like yes. that the whole time, um, which I love. And you got mountains and, you know, for me, that's almost it's heaven. Pretty. Um, mm-hmm. And just putting like Bon Iver or some really depressing music on and <laughs> like put my head, <laughs> sound, it sounds pretty, pretty, sounds depressing, but um, I, I enjoy it. It makes me feel good. I don't know what it is. I just, I think it's just like that, because of that, I don't know, I'm, I've got probably from being sensitive, but what I do get depressed about in New York, um, uh, which I found really hard is just the sort of chaos of it. Um, the lack of nature, the sort of the fast paced nature, um, all of that kind of thing I find really difficult. So it's a, to, to the point where, yeah, I don't know if it's the kind of place, well, I, I, I definitely know it's the kind of place I, won't be able to live in long term. Um, it's been great and good for work and different things having this experience. But uh, yeah, I think um, sometime in the next, you know, six months, I'm going to look at sort of where I go to next because mm-hmm. I know it's actually not healthy for me. Um, yeah. yeah, being here long term. Yeah, I feel that I miss the Midwest sometimes because, like you said, and how Vancouver is, it's just very more laid back if the people are very friendly yeah. you wave at your neighbor you open doors for people and I find with this chaotic energy most people are just in their own little worlds and they're doing their own thing and they don't realize exactly. there's people around them and I somehow you get that lack of kindness and I don't know it's just it's hard I take all that into so I, I oh massively the other yeah way of life just the calmer <laughs> yeah well I think if you're you know more sensitive to things like it it does have that effect. I think if you sort of like, cause there's people everywhere here and it can sometimes feel more lonely because of that, because you're like, okay, there's people everywhere, but I feel so disconnected from everyone. Yeah. Everyone's in their own little world. You know, you feel like if, if you sort of drop dead on the street, no one's really going to care because everyone's just, you know, on a mission and doing their own thing. Exactly. Like you said, like living in smaller sort of towns or communities, you do do feel that connection where there's genuine sort of care and support and um yeah i don't know it just yeah. it feels nicer Probably it does it's more, I, more what it's what we're meant to how we're meant to live really you know mm-hmm. i know what i would do to have a farm with chickens and goats and dogs and just <laughs> frolic through the fields that's that my would goal be nice. in life i'm like oh you might find me in tennessee or somewhere more south but just yeah I just want space to roam. I think nature I know, is so healing. Be, so that's all I want. 
<laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah. And then you can just have that as a base to travel from and do stuff. Yeah. It'd mm-hmm. be perfect. So how are you doing? Um, in general Life, or in-, in work, you work with a lot of people and talk about mindsets and mental health. So how does that take a toll on you? It's a 10 year anniversary of Underbrax and we've relaunched with the classic white pair. We've also got new styles coming out super soon. We're donating a dollar from every pair to mental health, currently to one in five. You can find all of this at www.underbrax.com. Um, I am in general pretty good, but it is, yeah, all the stuff I obviously talked about with New York and um, you know, being probably, I've got a network over here now, but you know, it's not that same sort of network I have back home. So dealing with all of that and then work has been great, but it has been full on. Like it's, um, like I launched my book last year with my business move your mind, we're expanding it and we're sort of trying to build better systems around it and a whole lot of things with that. And then on the other side of what I do with the acting work, I'm, um, been working on a um a pilot for a tv show i'm trying to get going so that's it's been juggling a lot of things and putting pressure on things and not being able to find a lot of balance and you know give myself balance so it's sort of um something i need to yeah probably do a pilot (laughs) good for you that's been fun yeah no i love and i love that stuff and it's sort of yeah it's, it's trying to find the balance where um you know the my i I make a living doing my work in the well-being sort of space and um and I love doing it and I'm trying to build I guess what I'm working on at the moment with the business is uh, I'm bringing on more people and um getting some money invested into it to try and build systems where we've got where it's not just relying on me being the main sort of person doing everything because mm-hmm. um you know it's just like I can't, it's too much for anyone to take on, but also I know how important it is to me to be able to, um, even if I don't, you know, have end up having a big career in it, it's really important to me to be able to do the stuff in the, in the film sort of world. Cause I really mm-hmm. do love it so much. And it's another thing I noticed, um, last year when I had a break from all of that, I, I did become, um, not depressed, but I just didn't feel myself. And I sort of lost, I felt a bit numb because, you know, it's something that makes me feel happy and, you know, it's like a passion and I guess it's, it's good to be aware of that, but it's, yeah, I'm trying, I'm definitely in that phase of trying to um, restructure everything and find a way to, you know, be able to balance things out to do, you know, the things that I like doing combined with, you know, my day-to-day stuff that I'm doing. So yeah, I can imagine that's where that's acting up. too. It's hard because with acting, I'm sure you're trying to be another character, but if you're in your own head, I'm, imagine it's hard to put yourself in their shoes and get into that role so I that's something I never thought about till this moment exactly no <laughs> it's like it's a whole nother I mean it, and it's something I really I'm talking to um a a friend a filmmaker in Australia um and he we're looking at as an extension with Move Your Mind with re- repurposing some of that content towards specifically the film and creative industries because it's, I mean, mental health in that area is just, it's unaddressed, um, probably mm-hmm. similar to what you were saying with, um, you know, nursing and in, in, in the healthcare industry. Um, I think statistically, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like three times um, more, it's three times higher, the rate of anxiety and depression, and at least twice as high the suicide rates in the creative industries. And, and I can understand that from being in it because you've got these people that normally the ones that are drawn to it are more, you know, sensitive, vulnerable sort of people. Then there's complete uncertainty and you're having to, in amongst all of that, go and often on a daily basis audition, be so vulnerable, put so much emotion into it and just get rejected, you know, hundreds, thousands of times told or made to feel, you know, the byproduct is you feel like you're not good enough. What's wrong with me? Why? when it's not actually the truth, it's just the industry is so competitive and so difficult, but it's just a recipe for anxiety, depression, mental health issues. And it, it needs yeah, so much more done, you know, in that area. Yeah, I can only, especially too, when you get to a place I'm sure, where you have the fame or whatever, and then the whole world's watching you. 
and then that's a whole nother layer of stress. Exactly. And that's, yeah, that's the interesting thing. I think a lot of people are in that industry for the wrong reason. Um, you know, wanting sort of that attention or fame, that's what the goal is to validate, you know, this sort of deep seated problem. And then when they get there, it wears off pretty quickly, the novel factor of having it. And then that leads to other problems. And yeah, so I think like anything, but probably on a slightly more extreme level, it's the kind of thing where, you know, you, you really, I mean, it's the message that I'm talking about and you, you were talking about before it's sort of to whatever it is, we need to take, get ourselves right first before we go and, you know, which can be feel counterproductive. And naturally we always, you know, it's like, no, I need to just get to where I need to be and get things going well, then I can have the time to look after myself, but it's just not how it works. And um, even if you get a result, you, you know, you might, you could, you might end up killing yourself to get a result, but you know, right. it's not worth the cost of doing it. So it's like, get yourself right first and get that so solid that then no matter what happens around you, you know, you're going to be okay. And you've got the tools and you've got, you know, the sort of, routine and infrastructure to cope and and then mm -hmm. you know you can because we're no matter what the hell we're doing in life we're going to have ups and downs and you know there's going to be unexpected things happen so i think it's um yeah a really important thing yeah I, I, being a nurse too i've learned a lot of people unfortunately have really bad or none like no coping mechanisms at all which i just find crazy you know because mm -hmm. in, in the health industry as well it's like but if it hasn't been taught and it's not part of, you know, it's just, but it's madness. Mm -hmm. I know. So hopefully I think it's kind of weird, but because of COVID, I think there's more awareness for mental health and nursing and how everyone's feeling. And hopefully something good will come out of all of this, if not that. <laughs> So yeah. it's been, it's been a blessing and a curse, but I, I know in a way I've become a better person and a more aware person of not only how I'm feeling, but others around me. And I had a lot of guilt at first with the whole learning to say no and boundaries, because I always was, I'm a giver in nature. So I just, I want to help everybody if I can. And that's when I realized, you know, it's okay to put yourself first sometimes, which I think a lot of people are still learning at least in the field we're in. And there's a lot of guilt with, especially the way the hospitals are, at least right now, it's we're so short staffed because people are getting sick and it's a cycle of, okay, well then I'll come in extra and I'll help. But then I was getting burnt out because I was coming into work too much. So it's, it's letting yourself take those days, not feel guilty and realize it's not selfish to take care of yourself first sometimes. So that's been helpful to say the least. No, I think, yeah, I love the way you've summed that up there. So I think it's like such an important point. And yeah, all the things you've sort of talked about here, I think, you know, having taken that time for yourself, setting boundaries, you know, being aware of your surroundings, making sure, you know, do it going and, you know, taking yourself out on on a date by yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's so important. Um, I love that actually going to the movies by yourself. It does, it feels just like <laughs> nice, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. this is like just something for me. It's not about anything else um mm -hmm. it was weird at first so but then then i like i'll go to lunch by myself and stuff it's and people always feel oh, weird yeah. and i understand that but when but you look around and a lot of people do it now too so it's like whatever. yeah who cares? you do you exactly. who cares <laughs> who cares um so we've got these five closing questions that we finish with these can be you know nervous short ish answers whatever comes to mind but yeah we just finish every episode with these sort of five questions we've um just slightly adapted them recently but um it's always yeah interesting to see the different answers that come up so um and before i go into that um if people want you said before um where can we send people if they want to find out more it was operation happy nurse.org Dot org. Also, okay. Operation Happy Nurse on Instagram, and then it's O H N letters Happy Hour Podcast is our Instagram for our podcast based on mental health and stress and anxiety relief. So, check it out. <laughs> great, great. Yep, check it out. So, everyone listening, they'll we'll have all of the links to those three things. Um, and yeah, love you to check it all out. Um, so, yep, five five closing questions. The first one is, uh, what did you like most about your childhood? 
Oh, you want to unpack this. Okay. <laughs> what did I like most? I, well, I've always been, this is kind of a weird answer, but I've always been really, really close with my sister. She's two years older than me. And I always say, if I have kids, I just want one, but then I realized how close our relationship was and she was very pivotal in my growth as a little human. And so I will say my sister, she's like my best friend. She lives in Sacramento. Oh, so she's, oh, in California time. She's like seven hours North of me, but in the real world, she's close by. So it's been really nice yeah. to have her here. Yeah, 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 amazing. No, I, that's, that's not a weird answer. That's a good answer. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think is currently the biggest burden on mental health in society? Yeah, the deep questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, giving you I... again, so, some nice lighthearted questions for you to finish <laughs> yeah. up with. What's the nicest thing about our childhood? And then you can see with this deep question. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say, I think lack of resources and also lack of knowledge of resources. So people don't know where to go. Or I think it's also an issue where, unfortunately, I have a lot of friends that feel they can't talk about it. Not even nursing, but even other jobs and other friends all over that just feel there's still stigma somewhere where they feel if they talk about it it's weak or especially men mm -hmm. I want to say um a lot of I've, I'm hoping there's more awareness on men's mental health but that's a big thing where I have guy friends that'll vent and they're like oh well, so sorry I talked to you about this I'm like it's fine that's why I'm here but there's such a stigma yeah. which I'm sure you could talk about more than I can well that's, it. yeah exactly it's interesting and even when you're asking what you know I'm working on at the moment we're sort of with Move Your Mind, we're using, we're adapting at the moment a program um, where it is actually a men, a digital men's community group for move, like a Move Your Mind group tailored for men where, um, for that reason, because I think it's sort of, you know, having that where people, where they can connect and, you know, you can share information and share stories and learn from other people and have that community. I think it's really important because yeah. it's, it's such a, yeah, it's a, it's a big Love area. That. A little safe space. Yeah, everybody needs a little that. safe space for them. Exactly. <laughs> um, what would you say is your personal definition of happiness? Oh my gosh, Nick. Okay. <laughs> I know this I'm just so chucking you in the deep end here. This <sighs> is like, yep. I feel like I'm in like, who wants to be a millionaire? Okay. Uh... I know. Don't, and don't get it wrong. I'm going to be, <laughs> no. I'm going to be comparing your answer about what mm -hmm. makes you, what you find as a definition of happiness to everyone else. If you don't do My... well, I'm going to, um, I'll have to work out what I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. I good. would no say pressure. my definition of happiness. Hmm. I think for me, it's being happy in basically every aspect of my life, which is kind of a vague answer. But what I mean is mm -hmm. like I spoke about having my happiness and understanding that I can be there for other people, but also, I don't know. I just want to be happy with everything that I do. So that's job, relationships, family, everything. And I think that's what I'm struggling with. I, I, mm. I'm going to vent to you like my therapist now. <laughs> mm -hmm. This will be $500. Um, I, I don't feel happy when I'm stagnant. So I like change to a point where like, I know it's kind of goes back to my, I like routine, but I do like change when I am control of it. <laughs> but I, I just want to be, I guess, like serene. I just want to feel like at the end of my life that I did all I could do. People know how I feel about them. I know how I feel about myself. And I've kind of like reached this point where I have no regrets. That's basically what I feel like my happiness would be. Yeah, love it. Love it. That's a great answer. Um, well, two two more here. These are not going to get any okay. more um, lighthearted. Okay. I apologize. It's <laughs> okay. Um, what, what are you most afraid of? Ooh. I think that goes off of what I just said. I'm mm. very afraid of people not knowing how I feel about them and not... I don't need to leave an impact, you know, that deep. I just want mm. people to 
know where they stand with me, know that they're loved and know that I at least made them feel safe somehow in their life and that they could come to me and that, you know, I don't want anyone to, mm. oh, is she mad at me? Like, I don't, I don't, I just try to be as honest as I can with people. So everybody knows where they stand and that I'm here for them no matter what. So that's my biggest fear is people not knowing that or feeling loved or people that feel alone. I just don't like that either. So. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Great answer. I like that. Um, so final one here, and then we're done with all of these deep things, even though this whole Sweating. podcast okay. is <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You're, just gonna, you're like, I'm going to have to take the rest of the day off and just... <laughs> Seriously, it's mental pressure. <laughs> what have you done to me? It's like, And it's like, what time is it there? It's like quite early in the morning. Nine o'clock. It's like I need some coffee before this. Nine o'clock in the Nick. morning. I know. And th- thank you for getting up early for this as well. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so... Final one, um, what are you um, personally most proud of? So I, this is going to get oddly deep, but I am very proud of myself for, so I used to, I'm still going through it, but I used to struggle with some eating disorders and issues such as that. So yeah. I am very proud of myself that I, and I honestly didn't even realize this was a thing until again, my boyfriend called me out basically nicely and said, hey, you, uh, you're you kind of putting your issues on me. And I wasn't realizing I was doing that as in he would have, I don't know, pop tarts for breakfast like he just did. And I would be like, oh, you're going to eat sugar like this early in the morning. Why don't you have like avocado toast or something? Like, and I didn't realize that I was projecting my issues on him until he called me out and told mm. him like, that he was uncomfortable mm. with that for very good reasons. So it was really important to me. And that's, and I was having this just at home, but none of my friends called me out on it or at least noticed it, even my own family. Um, so I am proud of myself that I'm, and which is another reason why therapy would be very helpful, but I am proud of myself and the fact that I, thanks to him and everyone else, but I've realized I have these issues and I've been working on them on my own. So as much as I can, and just being aware has been huge and working through that. If I have like this own, my own strength, I guess that feels very good. And so mm. that's, I'm proud of myself for acknowledging that's things. Cause I don't know how long I would have gotten, you know, without realizing like, Hey, you have problems here, you know? So that's totally. um, very beneficial. Totally. I don't know if that needs no, a trigger thanks. warning, sorry, but <laughs> for anybody out there, but. Yeah, we can put a, yeah, for anyone listening, we can, and we can put that in the notes as well. No, but thank you um, for sharing that. And I think it's, yeah, yeah. It's so good. You can talk about that. And I mean, exactly. I won't it's go into too. it now, but it's huge, but yeah. And I've got examples like that in my own life where, and very similar things. And even um, I talked about it in my book, I actually developed an eating disorder. as like a 12 year old when I was obsessed with um, competing in sport and all these crazy things were happening in my life. And it was something I didn't really, and I was doing similar things, projecting onto my you know, siblings. And mm-hmm. I felt so much um, shame about it. And I was like, so, you know, I felt so horrible. I was like, what the hell, you know, these people I care about. And it, but then when I spoke to them about it and looked into it, you know, they completely understood and, and you just realize, you know, it's like anything, another problem, but it's something we can, you know, really bottle up and feel shame and, you know, um, bad for projecting things onto people we care about. But mm-hmm. um, it's just being, again, you know, like what you've Acknowledgement. done. Acknowledgement. Being able to acknowledge it. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for getting up early and uh, answering all my deep questions and mm-hmm. talking about all these other things. And no, it's been really great. I've really enjoyed talking <laughs> to you. I think, um, yeah, it's amazing what you're doing. I think you definitely need to um, continue not being too hard on yourself because <laughs> you you're doing amazing work. <laughs> Me as well. Exactly. We yeah. both need to check Relax. in with each other and make <laughs> yeah. sure we're, we're not being too hard on ourselves. Um, but yeah, thank you for sharing all of it. I think, yeah, it's, it's really all, a lot of stuff you talked about. I know our listeners are going to get a lot of value out of, and again, for anyone listening, um, definitely check out operation happiness. All the links are in the, in the show notes, uh, such an important initiative and yeah, appreciate you. you making the Thank time. you. Thank you for having me. I've had a lot of fun except the last five questions. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> 
just kidding. It no, was good too. to think about. I like having deep moments at 9 a.m. I actually got a lot out of that. So thank you. At, I know at 9 a.m. on a Friday morning, some nice <laughs> and deep questions to start to end the okay. week with. <laughs> I love a good mental sweat. So exactly. All good. Exactly. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks to Carly Baker for joining me today for Move Your Mind. If you'd like to purchase the Move Your Mind book, you can go to nickbrax.com book. And if you'd like to join the Move Your Mind community, you can go to moveyourmind.me.